What is happening, everybody? Sir Joseph coming your way, and this is Final Fantasy IX Weapon Man Run. Alright, before we conclude the card tournament, that's where I last left off in the last video, as well as lots of plot dumping, which we will which we'll uh, see a little bit more of right now. Vivi. Wanna do something in Dolly. Um, this is completely missable, uh, and yeah, Vivi gives a hint of, t of, uh, to the location of one of the Stelazio. He says, before I fell, something was shining, and I reached for it, or whatever, and yeah, that's where the, <clears throat> that's where the coin is, so, yeah. That's also how he developed, uh, his fear of heights, fear of heights, rather, yeah, and yeah. Apparently, it's been a very long time since uh, Vivi left. Ah! So yeah, we'll get a little bit more information on, or a little bit more background on Vivi's uh, adoptive grandfather. As a as this act progresses here, but I want to go to Dolly. Um, I also don't want to fight the friendly ghost. I don't want to get into the encounter with the friendly ghost. Hopefully, I do not. It'd be nice if I didn't. It's a long walk too to the gate. Now, what I'm about to do in Dolly is completely missable. Is uh, it's missable. So if you don't, of course. And it's the friendly ghost. Uh, yeah. I'm running. And hopefully, I know I can just, just do this. Did not want to get that. So now it's going to take a while. It's going to take a lot of encounters for me to get the friendly ghost again. Hopefully, be able to. So, anyways, I don't. Have, I don't have to. Stutter step now that the threat level went down. I guess that's a good thing. Oh well. But yes. So what we're about to do in Dolly is, is missable. So this is the only time you can do it. You cannot do it at any other at any other time during the game. And you get a decent reward for what I'm about to do also. So it is pretty good. Alright. Yeah. There we go. Right. I'm just gonna run over to Dolly. I don't care if I get into an encounter. As long as it is not in the forest. So if it's in the forest, I'll, I'll run into the friendly moo, which I do not want. Yeah, I can, t I can run from these guys. So. Oh, cool counter attack. Is it on? Nice. <laughs> Yeah. You know, level one enemies. Just don't care about them. So, yeah, I, I figured I may as well show this off as well as uh, get decent cash prize for doing this. Doing this very, very small side quest. So, yeah. It'll also finish up uh, Morid's uh, coffee side quest as well. Which is also really cool. You see how the stutter stepping works? Because if I was if I was stutter stepping, wouldn't have gotten the encounter. But I'm just lazy. And yes, that's another complaint that many have about this game. And yes, it's also a complaint that I have about this game is that fighting takes very very long. It's Painfully long, probably the worst in the entire franchise for sure. Yes, uh, matched only by probably I would say ten or eight. Yeah, Final Fantasies eight through ten were 
had notoriously long fight sequences, and it's uh, pretty annoying. Anyways, so here we are back at Dolly, and now we can... Actually go into the mayor's house. And you have to uh, check uh, these things in like the, the different uh, areas in the room uh, in a certain order. I think you check the desk twice, then the shelf. And then the shelf again. Then I believe the heater. There you go. And then we get the mayor's key. That's all I needed. So all the way back in the beginning of the game, that door said, oh, I need the mayor's key. Well, that's where you get the mayor's key. And you open it up. It leads to this little thing where the chocobo was. That's where Vivi got snatched up earlier. And you can get 30,000 gil. As well as Berman coffee. So there you go. Good stuff. Is this is this worth getting the thirty thousand dollar the thirty thousand gil? Absolutely. If you haven't done the cotton rope trick, you will need every last uh You'll need all of that. So yeah, it's awesome. And may as well, really? Oh, it's friendly move as well, isn't it? I didn't think I could uh, encounter it in the field. I thought I could only encounter it in the forest. Yeah, not yet. I wanna save all these friendly monsters for later. How however, I will, uh, I'll put the timestamps of when I encountered them anyways, just to show you where they're at. So yeah. yeah anyways, so this is Morid's place. Oh, Morid is on top of, is uh, at the, uh, is right here actually, whoops. And yeah, so if you have the Kerman, Berman, and Mocha coffee beans, give them to Morid, and well, he gets to have the best coffee ever, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. And, okay. That is very, very unsettling to say that he can now join his departed wife because he was able to drink the best coffees in the world, but... Yeah. I guess, uh... Best things in life are very simple, I guess. And yes, so... To, when you do that, you get a model of the theater ship, which he will gladly send to us in Limbloom. So, that's in Limbloom waiting for us. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. There's the ice cavern. If you go in there, and I'm not going to, because I want to just get a Petrino, uh... You'll get a dialogue saying that it's too warm because of the mist disappearing. So you can't explore the uh, ice cavern. So all that stuff is, has become missable. So fortunately the, the stuff you get in there is very, very easily replaceable and nothing really important. Like it's just items and stuff. So, hey, it's whatever. Oh, wait, I went to Hong Kong. I will be going to the gates later on, to the various, the various, you know, locations of the gates, because uh, you can get some items there, you can get some decent cards as well, but not yet, not good to that yet, so. As for cards, I think I'm going to be good, because uh, the championship round of the tournament is actually the easiest round. Ah, I skipped the step there. I knew that would happen. Yeah, the start of stepping in this uh, game is actually quite difficult. Oh, cool. 
back attack. Nice. I thought I had a lure equipped, apparently not. Oh well. And it's carved spiders too. Fit. Level one bot, level one enemies. Easy to beat. But I don't want to even mess with them because I got other stuff to do. Better stuff to other stuff to worry about. It don't involve carved spiders. <laughs> I should be okay now just to run through. Or not. I'm just gonna kill this one. This whatever it is. Oh there you go, I killed it with a counter. Yeah, counter in this game, very nice, very useful. Combine it with MP attack and we got it's good stuff. There, kill that Trick Sparrow. Okay, now let's conclude the card tournament. We want to do more plot dumping, even more effing plot dumping. Promise you, viewers, it will be over soon. Like, like in an hour. And this is easily the least. Uh, this is like the most boring part of Final Fantasy IX for sure. You don't get to fight anything, no bosses to fight. You just play cards and you plot dump. And here's the championship round, which I don't even care about winning because I already have a. I played ahead because I'm doing lots of side quests after this. Uh, in particularly, in particular, the Chocograph side quest, so I've already played ahead and they think that the Regent Sid is <laughs> is Eren's pet but in fact Sid is the champion I guess but Eren is playing is like substituting or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. I just want all this plot to end. Yeah. Anyways. I'm gonna actually, I'll try to win. I mean, I'll try to do something here. But I'm not gonna be like, I'm not gonna take this real serious. No, that work. I think with Oglop cards is that there's just zero P. So it's zero. Or, it's either zero or one physical. So, really easy cards to capture and take, take down. So. Oh wow. I didn't think that would happen. <laughs> ah, why not? Let's see what happens. Nice. There we go. Very good. Almost got a perfect. Haha, <laughs> cool. I'll grab that. The, uh. Now, the card point system, and for winning the tournament, you get a rebirth ring, which is very nice. Very, very nice. It gives you the auto life passive ability, and that is going to be very, extremely useful in the, uh. In, during the rest of the game, for sure. So, there we go. Excellent. Cool. And apparently, the Health of Card A2 has been completed. And it can fly without mist. And they were testing new airship. And the Regent is worried that something might happen. And, yeah. Some bad things are brewing in Alexandria because Kuja still wants to, still wants Eidolons. Guess who has Eidolons? Garnet has Eidolons. And yeah. Kuja's got some mat, some awful things on his mind, and yep, it is time. 
We just got summoned Bahamut and Bahamut is going to destroy everything. I love the look there that Carnage has. It's like, wow. <laughs> I'll let this play out real quick. So. Be right back. Oh, there we go. Just wanted to get some, something to drink. And yeah. The citizens of Alexandria are... Running for their lives. Alright. Woo! Good. I needed that. And here we go. So, we're about to enter another mini game, which, uh, can only be done once. And if you don't do it right the first time, you're gonna have to reload your save and do it again. Um, just to demonstrate what happens if you select the wrong orders to the wrong uh, soldiers, I'll do this like the wrong way or whatever, or the fastest way or whatever. So if you pick the right, uh, if you pick the right thing, like, and this goes all the way back to the very first like hour of the game where you. Whereas Steiner, you talk to all the soldiers to try to find the princess who is about to be kidnapped from the play. And one of the soldiers describes some kind of traits about each each uh, soldier. So, for example, Waymar and, ha and Hagen are really, really good at fighting. So, if you pick the right command for the right soldiers, you'll get a longer response. If you pick the wrong one, like here, they'll just say, oh, uh, we'll, we'll do our best. So, yeah. So, if you do it right, they will do the thing. So, yeah. So, the best you can get, of course, is four out of four. And if you get two out of four, you get an elixir. If you get four out of four, you get angel earrings, which of course is what you want. And of course, I already got that because I played ahead a little bit without leveling at all, without getting a single XP other than what you're about to see. So yeah, and, and Garnet is she's pretty anxious right now. But oh, what's happening to her pendant? Oh, that's not good. She collapsed to the floor. Uh oh. And now we get one of the best scenes in the entire game. Finally we get to do some Finally we get to do some freaking fighting. Which is great. Yeah. Excellent. And I wanna actually do this. Uh oh, oh. I was gonna get a coral sword for uh Steiner and I didn't do it. Whoops. That's okay, I still want to learn level up. Man Eater as well. I don't care about Jelly as much as, yeah, Pokemon should be really good. And of course, these enemies are about to fight are undead, so I want, of course, that one to kill her. Work. There we go. And I actually don't want the lurk there. And I really do need, uh, uh, want him to have something that will give him, uh, insomnia. But I have to learn alert too, so this may take a while. Oh, uh, let's see. Who has it been? Oh, I get ability up too. Yeah, see, this is why I wanted to wait for the uh, friendly monsters. You know what? I'll do that. Because I really don't want to get put to sleep from these enemies. So, we'll do that. And give them ability up with Diamond Club. Perfect. 
Sounds like a plan, doesn't it? Does it? Yeah, it sounds like a good plan. Okay, we'll go ahead and put the ability up here. I don't know bug killer since I don't know bugs. I don't know. Anyways, we have Beatrix. We have Beatrix in the party too. And she could do some stuff. But I don't really care about that. I really would rather have Steiner uh, take out all these enemies and get all their XP. However, I just wanted to get AP more than XP. So we'll have Beatrix in the fight. So this is awesome. So you get to see awesome tag team here with Steiner Beatrix. It's very nice. Against a whole bunch of Mystodons, which are easy to beat. Nothing to it. And the Mist isn't going to put uh, Steiner to sleep. The purpose of this is for, for Steiner, who you have not had since uh, the second act, to uh, gain a whole ton of levels and to get a whole bunch of AP and stuff like that. Although they really should have had Freya in this as well, it would have been really good. But it is what it is. It's fine. But then, then again, Freya is with you and Trino, so I guess it makes sense. No. Because if you don't level Freya like crazy uh, in the Clara and Bermisha area, she will be behind. She will be decisively behind everybody, especially after this segment. So, yeah, that's why I really wanted her to gain lots of levels, and I really wanted to level a little bit with my other players. Because of that. So, okay. So now that Steiner has ability up, very nice. So, let's see. Oh, okay. Still needs to leave Insomniac. Okay, cool. He'll, he'll be able to get rid of that. Perfect. Okay. So, level up. So you can learn level up. So start learning on Insomniac, too. So, that's good. Now, with the Coral Sword, uh, which I should have bought earlier. Uh, I could teach Steiner a thing called Charge, and I thought that Charge didn't use MP, but it does. But Charge does. It's a sword skill that Steiner can use, and it will get anyone who is in critical status to attack without using an ATB turn. So that's incredibly useful, but I can't use it since it costs magic to use, so I can't do it. And that's unfortunate. And if Steiner himself is a... What's it called? Um, in critical status, he'll order himself to do physicals as well. So it's hilariously broken. And I was gonna probably... I was gonna try and use it during this Weapon Man run, but nope. I can't. I can't. Charge uses MP to use, so he can't do it. I'll still use Dark Side, and I probably will actually. I think there is one enemy, one boss, especially one encounter, random encounter, that I'm definitely gonna need to use Dark Side on because I believe Dark Side is magic. And there's, I'm gonna be coming across an enemy that can only be hit by magic, which is, yeah, so. But that's. In about that's ooh, actually it's gonna be a while because after this little segment, when I finally am able to, you know, do something with my party, you can do a whole bunch of side of uh, chocolate related side quests, and that's awesome stuff that I really want to do if I want to keep my levels low in this run, which I intend to. Um, I haven't planned it out yet. But I would like my average level to be under 30 uh, for the entirety of this, uh, what's it called, this act. I want to see if I can swing that. Um, or no, not, not, the, not the entirety of this act, but for the next uh, couple segments. I want to see if I can swing that. I'll lower it and heighten it, or I'll heighten it if necessary, if I'll make it better, I'll make it more... I'll make it to where I need to be a little bit more leveled, but we'll, we'll see what happens for sure. So, yeah. Very nice. And I think, uh... Oh, whoops. Oh, man. That's, uh, 
Sorry if I sped through that text. Uh, it was just Steiner saying that he promised his to protect everyone he knows, including Beatrix. Which is hilarious because Beatrix is like... Yeah, Beatrix would be protecting Steiner. <laughs> Oh, wow, really? Heh. <laughs> We're gonna have, uh, Steiner, uh... Steiner take on the uh, next wave of enemies alone. Oh, never mind. I thought I could have entered the menu to get some more stuff. Beatrix said save your valedictation, whatever it is. Because Steiner was almost about to tell Beatrix that he has caught the feels for her. But Beatrix is like, save it! Take out these enemies! And I know you can because you're tranced. Yeah. Like I think I, I, like I believe I demonstrated before, Steiner's trance is ridiculous. His attack power just skyrockets and you can do close to maximum damage. Just like that, 3500. That's without MP attack, that is without... That's with... Uh, that's with a weapon that's behind a couple of segments. Yeah. With MP attack would have been about 5,000. With the Coral Sword it would have been probably around 7,000. Ridiculous. And Steiner, in towards the end of the game, is going to be the MVP. The decisive, de facto MVP of, of this game. Like the de facto MV MVP. But no one will be no one will be better than Steiner here. Oop. Yeah. So now something's happening here. We need to see what's going on. I don't think you can really. Yeah, you can't really go anywhere else. Like, the game will force you pretty much to go over here. Especially now. <laughs> I get to hear this really cool music. And yeah, we get to see some really pretty cool... Uh, pretty cool CGI stuff here like this. As we get to see the secret behind Alexandria. Whoa. And you will get to see exactly why it is called Alexandria. And you'll see it's a really nice touch. And it does put a really nice exclamation part point on this uh, beginning segment of uh, this disc 3 slash act 3. crazy is this, is that the princess just becomes the, just just gets coronated and right after Kuja goes after her. It's very unfortunate. And here we are with uh, here we are at, in the Hildegarde 2 <laughs> It wasn't really designed well. Nice little advice from Amaranth there. <laughs> and there are the two jewels that Aiko has that are 
glowing now. Just like the ones in Garnet was glowing earlier. And apparently Aiko knows about the Holy Judgment here. So yeah, it's crazy. About the Holy Judgment. That's because of the horn. Uh, so, I'll tell you right now. In Alexandria, an idol in can protect Alexandria when, whenever it's necessary. And because Echo's horn can communicate with Eidolons, Alexandria was calling Echo, telling her to come join Garnet to help her summon uh, Alexander. So there you go. <laughs> now, Let's be real here, if Garnet had her horn, she probably would have done the same thing. She'd be leading Aiko here, instead of Aiko leading uh, Garnet. So yeah, so when all four of these jewels are together, the holy summon, the holy idol, and is able to be called and summoned. So, and because Aiko has been able to communicate with Eidolons, she is able to, uh, she is able to guide Garnet instead of the other way around. It's only because Garnet got her horn removed, so she doesn't know how to tele, she doesn't know how to commute telepathically with the Eidolons. Like, Aiko can. So, that's the explanation behind that. Um, and yes, so, there was once one crystal, and it got, it got split into four. Because, uh, because there's an opposite to, uh, Alexander. And we're going to be fighting that opposite later on. So this is Alexander and it covers all of Alexandria. The entire castle town with its wings. And look at this. Oh! Denied! And there's Alexander. Awesome! Look at that thing. That one looks really really cool. It looks awesome. And it's gonna fire holy lasers at Bahamut and it's gonna beat Bahamut behind. Oh yeah. Bye bye Bahamut. Nice knowing you kid. Boom! Done. 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 That is awesome. Easily one of the best uh, movies in uh, Final Fantasy in the entire franchise, in my opinion. But but guess what? Bad things are gonna happen. Let's check this out. One thing that can almost I can kind of, for lack of a better word, cancel out what idle ones can do. And that is this weird airship, this weird, this weird ship that we get. But who is this? Oh, who is this? This guy doesn't look. This guy doesn't look friendly, does he? Is it on? Apparently he knows it on. Uh-oh. Man. Now what's he gonna do? Whoa. The 
see what happens. Okay, oh yeah, that's what that's what the invincible will do. It enslaves Eidolons, and Kuja was uh, commandeering this ship the entire time, telepathically, like Eiko was with uh, the Eidolons. So, and yes, that dude on the invincible was Garland. Is it Garland from Final Fantasy One? Well, I do have a theory on that, and I'm actually going to talk about it in a different video probably in podcast form because it'll be way easier uh, to make a long story short my theory is that yes it is Garland from Final Fantasy 1 however Final Fantasy 9 is not a direct sequel to Final Fantasy 1 Final Fantasy 1 is a direct sequel to this and I'll probably do a podcast or something about that uh, whenever I'm finished with this game, or in a few months, or whatever. Because I have lots of good theories about this game, for sure. And it's awesome. But yeah, anyways. So we arrive at the castle. Everyone seems like they're good in one piece. And this dude's looking, and Hagen's looking for uh, Steiner. And Steiner's all in the, in the town, man. <laughs> and yeah. Looks like we're we gotta find Dagger and Aiko. Or Sarah and Aiko. Or Garnet and Aiko or whatever. I'm going to tell these scholars that we're under attack and they just kinda of leave. Okay, now. This is also missable. So in disc two, when you are rescuing Garnet, you have the opportunity to fight this optional super boss, the Tantarian. Um But you could have you could have uh, elected not to do that. It would have been just fine. Because you had, you know, you had that 30 minute time limit, so, eh, whatever. This is the last opportunity you have to fight Tantarian. Uh, if you don't take this opportunity, then that's all she wrote. So this is missable. Uh, fighting Tantarian, um, you have to do amount of damage to the book. And then it'll show the monster, and then you gotta kill the monster before it heads into the book, and so on and so forth. Uh, and you can just chip away at its hip points over and over. Um, you can also do. You can also use Steiner and Disc Two, and ha and uh, use Minus Strike to do like 150 to 200 damage. That's what happens when you get to page 150 to 200. It'll uh, show up. It'll show the monster. They can do it that way. Um, oh, I'm not gonna fight it because you need magic to beat it. You really do. You just need it. And it's weak to fire, so you can focus with Vivi a bunch of times and hit the Tentarian with fire over and over, and oh, beat it in like four turns. When you beat the Tentarian, you will get running shoes, which are really good. Auto haste. It teaches auto haste. Uh, you get a whole bunch of XP and uh, 30 AP, so it's excellent. Yeah, but I'm not gonna fight him in this a weapon. Okay, let's see what happens. As Sidon <laughs> knocks over Sid. And yeah, Sidon's right. Like, the castle is in, in a lot of danger. And Amaranth just does not like the heroism of Zidane, and he's just like, alright, I'm peacing. Aww. And Vivi just wants to be a hero, he just wants to help, he just wants to be like this. He wants to, he wants to be the hero of the day too, but... Yeah. He gets talked into it, finds it on. Anyways. Uh oh. Yeah, a whole bunch of shaking going on because. About to get attacked really bad. Whoa! Yeah. So the Invincible is going to enslave Alexander. 
turn its white wings black. And look at that. Wow. That is the power of the invincible. Man. That's just not right. Oh, oh. Yeah, and the... And the, and the pendant, jewel pendant around... Around Garnet's neck is... Going crazy here. Oh, no good. From the rubble. And as that thing's gonna crush Garnet. As she cowers and as she just... Yeah. There's it on. There's it on to the rescue and <laughs> it goes like kind of staring at them like what the hell. <laughs> <laughs> that stare from Echo. <laughs> so yeah, how is it on does that? I have no idea. But yeah, so sit on to the rescue, saves the day. Oh man, but not before this invincible is gonna completely wreck Alexandria to pieces, just like it did Medane Seri. Look at that. That is disturbing to watch. And yes, this is Garland. Yep. And they're using the theory of uh, Final Fantasy VII, where uh, if someone dies, their soul returns to a planet. So this gets explained later on, much later on, that uh, Garland wants souls to go to a different planet and not Gaia, because Garland's from a different planet. And that wraps up everything in Alexandria, and oh my lord. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. And how everyone got here, I have no clue. I really wish I knew. <laughs> because, man, everything in Alexandria got, just got destroyed. Yeah. And there's Baku. Yeah. Yeah. We're all in limb bloom, which is uh undergoing some good repairs here. Things are coming along good. But Alexandria that place is destroyed. So let's get some more chests here. Why not? Nice. And that's good. Okay, we're gonna save here and then I promise you, I promise you, I promise you all, the next video is gonna be the last video where we do plot dumping. I promise. I promise. Until then. Take care of yourselves. And stay strong. Keep being awesome. Peace.